Today I'm going to start talking to you about the quadratic formula. Here it is. It looks massive. It's not really that bad if we start looking at the pieces and parts. A big shout out to the quadratic formula song to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. That is the one that my students have learned the best with. And if you hear me singing, which you probably will, it is that song as we go through here. All right, as you look, I want to show you this. You should be familiar with the plus or minus in front of the square root sign because we used that when we were solving quadratic formulas using square roots. Also, those of you who found the line of symmetry when the uh, quadratic formula was in standard form, you should recognize this formula also because that helped you find the x value for the vertex. The quadratic formula uses the a, b, and c that we've been talking about in the past in the standard form of the quadratic formula to find the value of x, which we also called the roots and the x-intercepts and the solutions. And you'll notice that the a value, which is the number in front of x squared, is going to show up twice. The b value is going to show up twice, and the c is going to show up one time as we do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through three examples. These are going to be easy ones that come out to nice numbers and not any irrational numbers. You'll have to go to a different video for that one. Here's a simple, fairly simple quadratic equation. As a reminder, a quadratic equation is one that its, its highest degree is a 2. So you're going to have an x squared in it. Now what I want to do is I want to point out my a, b, and c. For this one, I highlighted the A value in red, the B value in blue, and I kept the C value in black. And so I'm going to start, and the first part of the formula is negative B. So since 9 is positive, we're going to have a negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. So 4 times A times C. You notice where I get all those? all over 2a. So here's 2 times my a value of 5. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify what's under the radical and I'm also going to simplify my denominator. So I'll have negative 9 plus or minus the square root. Well, 9 squared minus 4 times 5 times 4 ends up being a 1. All over 2a. So 2 times 5 is 10. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two answers, one where I have the plus in front of the radical and one where I have the minus. And so we're going to do the plus first, negative 9 plus, well, what's the square root of 1? That's easy, 1, all over 10. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8, so I have negative 8 tenths, which could also be negative 4 fifths or negative 0.8, which is also negative 8 tenths. Then I'm going to do the minus. Notice that's the only difference here in the numerator over 10. And then that is negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10 all over 10. Well, that gives me a negative 1. So here are my two answers. Here is another problem, and I'm going to highlight its a, b, and c. Again, I put the a in red, the b in blue, and the c I left in black. Now I want you to notice I also... Uh, colored the sign in front of the 5 because B is negative 5. It's really important to notice that. So here we go. The quadratic formula is negative B. Okay, negative B. Negative negative 5 is just basically the opposite of negative 5, which is positive 5. Plus or minus the square root. Now when I do B squared here, I'm going to put it in parentheses because if you don't and you use a calculator... It's going to do the 5 squared and then tack on the negative, and that's not what you want. You want negative 5 times negative 5. Right. Minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. There you go. All right, again, I'm going to just do the radical and the denominator, so plus or minus the square root of... Ah, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25 minus 24 is a 1. I promise you, it's not always going to be a 1 underneath there, folks. But it's nice right now that it is. All right, this one. 5 plus, oh, what is the square root of 1? 1. All over 4. 
and that becomes 6 fourths or 1.5 or 3 halves. And the next one is 5 minus. Remember, I got to do that plus or minus in two different problems here. 5 minus 1 is 4 over 4. Well, that equals 1. So here are your two answers. This one should look a little different to you. And if you're like, hey, wait a minute, one of those sides should have a zero, you are correct. So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract 2 from this side so that that side can be a zero. I get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. One thing that I suggest to some of my students is to actually put over to the side the letters a, b, and c and write down what they are before they put them into the quadratic formula. So we start with this. What is a? You're like, wait a minute, there is no number in front of x squared. You're right. What number can be invisible? 1. Yep, when we're multiplying. B is a 2, and it looks like C is a negative 3. So here we go. The quadratic form is negative B, so negative 2 plus or minus the square root of B squared, 2 squared minus 4AC. Don't forget that negative. All over 2A, so 2 times 1. All right. I'm going to simplify the radical and the denominator, so I'm going to do negative 2 plus or minus, and that actually becomes a 16 all over a 2. So now I'm going to split off my plus or minus, and I say negative 2 plus the square root of 16 is 4 all over 2, and that is going to be, let's see, 2 over 2 is a 1. And then the other one, I want to do the minus, minus 4 all over 2. That is a negative 6 divided by 2, which is a negative 3. So there are your answers, 1 and negative 3. All right, now, go and have some fun.